I'd like to tell you a story today, a true story. And I've got titles up there, but I got a bit confused. Beware, God is working. But if God is working in your life, you do not have to beware because it is a good thing. So I thought I'd change that to be aware that God is working in your life. And it is wonderful to be aware of how God is working individually in each one of our lives. Then I put God works in amazing ways. And I've experienced that in the last two weeks in preparing this message. I've already preached it to my 12-year-old granddaughter who I didn't even know was coming. <laughs> and it was absolutely perfect in three or four different areas. It was sitting right beside the bed where we were talking. And I was able to read the story that I'll read to you shortly. God moves in mysterious ways. He's wonders to perform. Can anyone tell me where that is in the Bible? Beware, it's a trick question. In the Old Testament. Old Testament? It is a hymn. It's a hymn, but it's not in the Bible. That's a time. Yes, we'll come to that shortly. Very good. But we need to be very careful with our text. There's another one. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Remember that? It's written above the door in my place. <laughs> <laughs> That's not in the Bible either. It's spare the child and hate the child. Spare the right and hate the child. So I'm going to go onto social media on Facebook this week and put that out there. And all the young people will give me ticks. And I like that. <laughs> or perhaps not. <laughs> but anyway, God does move in mysterious ways. He's wonders to perform. And I want to look at these scriptures just to set the context mainly for the story. If we can go to the first one, which is Romans 11, 33 to 36. And you'll see the meaning of God moving in mysterious ways. He's wonders to perform in this. It says, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable, or maybe mysterious, are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counsellor? Or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. That's a wonderful doxology, but it's also a doctrinal truth. <coughs> the depths of his riches. How unsearchable are the mysterious ways in which God works. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Here it is in this book. Philippians 2 said, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And that's the type of mind we want to have. Let's go to Isaiah 55, please, Kim. 55, 8 to 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word, word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, and it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. And then I added, added, but not adding to the Bible, even if we do not understand it at the time. Because sometimes the ways in which God works in our lives, we do not, simply cannot understand at the time. It just doesn't seem right to the human mind. A commentator who wrote these words, and I should have got his name, I apologise to him, whoever he is, it's not me, but explains that God sometimes does things in a very roundabout way, but it has a kind of boomerang effect. I think he might have been an Aussie. At times it seems God goes in one direction off the beaten path, but that is merely our perspective of it. We find out later, after we have grown in wisdom and understanding, that he has been following his plan all along. We are the ones who have not 
kept up. It is a matter of perspective, man's perspective versus God's. God always gets his job done. When he sends forth his word to accomplish a work, it always comes back to him with the result that he intends. It may not make much sense to us at the time, but it surely works because God is behind it. In the end, it is the best way. And I can say amen to that in so many areas in my life, having lived to, as my grandson tells me, a hundred years of age. <laughs> You'll reach it soon, one day, Ron, maybe. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Joan sang a chorus before, and I've got this little chorus too. Is it okay if I sing it wrong? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's called He's Still Working On Me, and he's definitely still working on my singing voice, yeah. as Ron knows. It says, He's still working on me to make me what I need to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth, and Jupiter and Mars. Yeah. How loving and patient he must be because he's still working on me. Isn't that true? How loving and patient God must be just to put up with me, let alone bother to work on me. There really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge him yet. There's an unfinished part. But I better just according to his plan. But I'll be better just according to his plan, fashioned by the Master's loving hand. Allow God to work in mysterious ways because he'll bring it to fruition. You may only realise the meaning of it in eternity, but he will do his work. Then I put Romans 8.28, it's well known, but also it raises a few questions of many of us. Mm -hmm. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things, all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. All things don't seem good when God allows them to happen in our lives, do they? But if you read the two previous verses, you'll find that at all times the Holy Spirit is interceding for you with groanings that cannot be uttered. Divine intensity taking your concerns and burdens to God before God in heaven. And that is why the outworking of all things that God does and allows in our lives, if we simply trust him, will end up with a great result. In fact, in verse 18, it says, Paul says, For I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And the final one, Ephesians 3.20, you know again it's a doxology. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. God in the details. And this will explain these scriptures I trust. Do you know God in the details? The story, true story? Well, you're about to. God in the details. Dr. Helen Rosevere, the famous Britain missionary doctor in the DR Congo, tells of this incident in her autobiography, Give Me This Mountain. And I read this to my <coughs> granddaughter because she said she tried praying. She is the Lord. She committed herself to the Lord in our house before church here one day a few years ago. She said, I tried praying, Granddad, but God didn't answer. And so I picked this up from beside me, which I prepared for this morning and read it to her. One evening I was helping a mother give birth in the maternity ward. Despite our best efforts, she died, leaving us with a tiny premature baby and a crying two-year-old girl. It would be hard to keep the baby alive because we had neither electricity nor incubator, and the nights were often drafty and cool, even though we were on the equator and the sister fetched our last hot water bottle to keep the baby warm, but soon came back in desperation because it had burst. OK, I told her, hold the baby as close to the fire as you can and keep it out of the drafts. The following day I had a prayer time with the orphans. I told them about the newly born, the two-year-old orphan and the broken hot water bottle. During the prayer time, Ruth, a ten-year-old, of a typical brutal directness of African children, prayed, Please, God, send us a hot water bottle. 
Tomorrow will be too late, God, because the baby will be dead by then, so please send it this afternoon. I took a deep breath because of the prayer's directness, then heard it continue. And while you're at it, would you please send a doll for the little girl so that she knows that you really love her. To be honest, I could not believe that God would do that. Oh yes, God can do everything. I knew that, theoretically. It's written in the Bible. But there are limits, aren't there? I hadn't received any parcels for home for four years, and if anyone sent a parcel, why would they send a hot water bottle to tropical Africa? <laughs> Late in the afternoon, I heard a car had come. By the time I arrived in my apartment, it had already left, but there was a large parcel on the veranda. I could feel tears welling up inside and called the orphans so that we could open it together. Apart from clothes, bandages and sultanas, the parcel contained, I could hardly believe my eyes, you guessed it, a new rubber hot water bottle. I cried. I had not dared to ask God for it, but Ruth had. She had been sitting in the first row and read forward shouting, if God sent the hot water bottle, he must have sent the doll too. <laughs> she dug to the bottom of the parcel and pulled out a beautiful small doll. Her eyes shone. She had not doubted for a moment. She looked up and asked, can we go to the little girl and give her the doll so that she knows Jesus loves her? The parcel had been on the way for five months, sent by a Sunday school class. The teacher had been so obedient to God that she even sent a hot water bottle to the equator. One of the girls had given a doll five months before a 10 year old African girl would pray, God, we need it this afternoon. The words in the Bible are true. It's in Isaiah 65, 24. It shall come to pass that before they call it, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. Joan has already quoted about the little children. The disciples were arguing about who was the greatest, and Jesus said, Allow the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. It's not that we're supposed to be childish in that sense, but to have that simplicity of faith in what God can and what God will do, even though we don't understand it at the time. That's a beautiful verse. It's the most definite verse in the Bible about pre-answered prayers that I know of. The context is it's a millennial reign of Christ. Satan is bound. Jesus is in their very midst. And so their hearts and minds are in accord with the Lord. But it's true. God said, I am the Lord, I change not. And Jesus says he is the same yesterday, today, and to the ages to come. In the New Testament, you'll find prayers answered instantly, just like that, and be wonderful. Well, that happened all the time, but it doesn't. Paul was in my leaders, and one of his fellow workers that was sick, and he had to leave him behind because he was sick. Not everyone gets healed. So it doesn't always work just the way we would like it. But God is in the outworking of what he is doing. One little bit more. God can easily answer prayer at once as, just as easily answer prayer at once as to delay it. And when the proper state of mind exists, he is as ready to answer it now as to defer it in a future time. What encouragement have we to pray? How faithful, how fervent should we be in our supplications? How full of guilt are we if one single blessing is withheld from our world that might have been imparted? if we had prayed as we ought. If one single soul should be lost, who might have been saved if we had not been unfaithful in prayer? Or maybe if we had not shared the gospel with them when we had an opportunity. Another example I shared with my granddaughter is King Cyrus of Persia. I also shared it with my GP, who happens to be a Persian or an Iranian. He's a Muslim, but he's hearing about the gospel from me and the previous doctor who mentioned him. 
And King Cyrus, nearly 150 years before he was born, the prophet Isaiah spoke about him and what Cyrus would do for the children of Israel who were to be in 70 years of captivity in Babylon, which we now call Iran. And the Bible records that certain people are foreordained to be born and carry out specific tasks for God during their lifetime. And a few of these individuals are even named before their birth. Cyrus the Great was one of those individuals whom God had predestined to play a pivotal role in his awesome plan for humanity. God was preparing an answer to the prayers of his people. Those Jewish people in captivity crying out to the Lord, crying out to Jehovah for release from that captivity. God had prepared that answer 150 odd years before. How did his mother know to call him Cyrus? He was spoken of in the word of God by the prophet Isaiah 150 years before as Cyrus. Proof of the divinely inspired word of God. As I shared with my granddaughter, you can trust this book. Ah, but it's only written by men. Yes, but it's God breathed. 2 Timothy 3.16 Final an example that comes from Creation Magazine and John and again thank you for talking about creation and creation ministries because she was talking to me also about creation and I was able to put her onto creation.com and show her how to type in and search out results from scientists and to pull out these magazines. There's a little love story in this and it's by Dr. King Clary, a geologist, geologist and a lecturer. And unfortunately, it's got smaller print than what I typed my other notes on. <laughs> a former student re relayed to me that while he was a Christian at the, top, well, at the time, the young lady next to him in my class was not. And I think he might have been interested in it. He told me that he appreciated the way I presented the truth of the fossil record, but he didn't know how it was impacting the young lady next to him. In essence, he told me that because of these lectures, this young lady started going back to church and accepted Christ as her saviour a few months later. Praise God. I had no idea that God was using my lectures to make such an impact, even though I couldn't talk about God or creation. You know, I've heard people say that they're shy or they're worried they might make a mistake when they share the gospel, and all these things are real. But here was a man who couldn't even talk about God or creation. And yet by just pointing out the errors in the lie of the devils or evolution, whatever you want to call it, this young lady was impacted. She went back to church and she gave her life to Christ. Mm. Later on, he lost his job. Well, that's not God working in a mysterious way, is it? Oh, yes, it is, because he relates how he went back to college and he learned so many more things that enabled him to share about God's creation and impacted me so many lives. See, even losing your job can be a good thing. As God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform, and he is doing it in the lives of each one here this morning. I mentioned that the hymn, someone, or someone else mentioned it actually, God moves in mysterious ways, William Cowper, is it, or Cooper, C-O-W-P-E-R, said God moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform, he plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skill, he treasures up his bright designs and works his sovereign will. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take, the clouds ye so must dread, a big of mercy and shall break in blessings on your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind, behind a frown in providence, he hides his smiling face. His purposes will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the flower. Blind unbelief is sure to err, and scan his work in vain. God is his own interpreter, and he will make it plain. And he will make it plain to us. It may be today, it may be 10 years down the track, or it may be it'll be in eternity. 
that he will explain the things that we're going through, things that at the time may not seem good. And one final quote before I close, it comes from another hymn, When We Walk With The Lord. And the chorus simply said, Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. And I'm just pausing because my time is now up. <laughs> Let's be aware of wonderful things that God is doing. Allow Him to, go, to do them in our lives, accepting His will because He knows best. Thank you, Neil.